Hello everyone, welcome back our BNP31803 site investigation class. We are still in Chapter 3 Earthwork and Setting Out, today we continue our class on Part 2 Setting Out. What is Setting Out? Setting out is the process of extracting information from the construction drawings, and pegs, profiles or other marks are then set to control the construction works and to ensure that each features in the drawings are constructed in the right position and to the correct level. Each features in the drawings are like building corners, sewers, earthworks, roadworks, steel structures or line works. While according to ISO 7078, 1985 Building Construction, Procedures for Setting Out, Measurement and Surveying, Vocabulary and Guidance Notes, Setting Out is defined as the establishment of marks and lines to define the position and level of elements of the construction work so that works may proceed with reference to them. Often used definition according to Iran, 2006, Setting Out is the reverse of surveying, Example surveying is a process of producing a plan or a map of a particular area, while, setting out begins with the plan and ends with the various elements of an engineering project correctly positioned in the area. This process is contrasted with the purpose of surveying which is to determine the positions of existing features on site by measurement. Good work practices and techniques in setting out is essential to minimize errors and to ensure the construction process proceeds smoothly. Good knowledge is vital, as the setting out phase is one of the most important stages in any civil engineering construction project. Mistakes in setting out can be costly and should be borne by the contractor. Even though the surveying and setting out are opposite processes to each other, but the techniques and instruments used for both processes are identical. Among all parties who are involved in construction works, the setting out is the responsibility of the contractor. Three main principles of setting out operations. 1. Horizontal control technique. 2. Vertical control technique. 3. Positioning technique. Then, two main aims when undertaking setting out operation. 1. Various elements of the scheme in the construction drawings must be correct in all three dimensions, both relatively and absolutely, that is each must be in its correct size, plan position and correct reduced level. 2. Once setting out begins, it must proceed quickly with little or no delay in order that the works can proceed smoothly and the cost can be minimized, overall. There are three stages of setting out need to be carried out in construction works. 1. Initial setting out, limits of work and site. 2. Stage 1, setting out of foundation and sewer pipeline. 3. Stage 2, setting out the design points. Further explanation on the next slide. While, BS 59641, 1990 has highlighted three-stage order of reference systems commonly adopted for large and complex building projects. 1. Primary system. 2. Secondary system. 3. Position points, the location of the details of the building, setting out planning reconnaissance. A reconnaissance of the site and planning of the setting out are essential. Based on the construction drawing, a suitable reference system should be selected and established. A suitable reference system selected will depend on 1. The shape and size of the site. 2. The positions of any existing buildings or obstructions. 3. The positions of the proposed building and ancillary works. 4. The sequence of excavation and construction walks. The chosen reference system should be such that redundant observations are possible and that the measuring points can be referred to during construction. The position of the main ground station should be chosen and protected such that they are at a min. Risk to damage or movement and unobstructed lines of sight can be maintained, setting out planning grid. Location grids are used to assist the planning authorities and designers in plotting the location of boundaries buildings, roads, underground utilities or other features. If the building to be set out, 
it is important to mark on the plan of the building site the approximate position of the structural grid or site grid. Site grids can be considered as the transfer of the location grid from the plan or drawing to the site by setting out. Structural grid are used by designers to define the position of structural elements, usually their center line, stages in setting out. 1. Initial setting out are The marking of site clearance and excavation areas Have four methods of setting out are Polar setting out method Intersection method Offset method and Method of free station points Then Initial setting out our establish permanent point. Position of permanent point and Establish benchmark, 2. Stage 1 setting out. In practice, first stage setting out involves the use of many horizontal and vertical control techniques. The purpose of this stage is to locate the boundaries of the works in their correct position on the ground surface and to define major elements. In order to do this, horizontal and vertical control points must be established on or near the site. 3. Stage 2 Setting Out Second stage setting out continues from the first stage setting out. Example, beginning at the ground floor slab, or road subbase level, etc. Up to this point, all the control points will be outside the main construction. Example, the pegs defining building corners, center lines and so on will be knocked out during excavation works and only the original control points will be undisturbed. Principle of setting out for horizontal control technique. Establish horizontal control points in the east and north coordinates points on the site so that the design points for each of the elements of the scheme in the construction drawings can be correctly fixed in position. Two factors to consider in establishing horizontal control points are The control points should be located throughout the site in order all the design points can be fixed from at least two of them so that the work can be independently checked. Then, the design points must be set out to the accuracy stated in the specifications. The construction and protection of control points is very important. Wooden pegs are usually used for non-permanent marking. Control points. Concrete mark is used for permanent marking. Control point. Horizontal control points can be first baselines. A baseline is a line running between two points of a known position. Any baseline required to set out a project should be specified on the setting out plan or drawing by the designer and included in the contract. Baseline can take many forms. Two specified points joined are 1. Run between two buildings 2. Mark the boundary with an existing building or development and 3. Mark the center line for a new road, second reference grid A control grid enables points to be set over a large area. Several different grids can be used in setting out R. 1. Grid survey 2. Structural grid. 3. Grid site. 4. Grid secondary is established inside the structure from the structural grid when it is no longer possible to use the structural grid to establish internal features of the building. Third offset pegs. Whether used in the form of a baseline or a grid, the horizontal control points are used to establish design points on the proposed structure. Once excavations for the foundations begin, the corner pegs will be lost. To avoid this extra pegs, offset pegs are used, principle of setting out for vertical control technique. In order the design points can be positioned at their correct levels, vertical control points of known elevation relative to some specified vertical datum are established. Some vertical control techniques are 1. TBM the positions of TBMs should be fixed during the initial reconnaissance so that their construction can be completed in good time and they can be allowed to settle before leveling them in. In practice, 20 mm diameter steel bolts and 100 mm long, driven into existing steps, ledges, footpaths etc. are ideal. 2. Site Trail 
These consist of a horizontal timber cross piece nailed to a single upright or a pair of uprights driven into the ground. The upper edge of the cross piece is set to a convenient height above the required plane of the structure, usually to the nearest 100 mm, and should be a height above ground to ensure convenient alignment by eye with the upper edge. Sight rails are usually offset 2 or 3 meter at right angles to construction lines to avoid them being damaged as excavations proceed. 3. Travelers and Boning Rods A traveler is similar in appearance to a sight rail on a single support and is portable. The length of the upper edge to its space should be a convenient dimension to the nearest half meter. Travelers are used in conjunction with sight rails. The sight rails are set some convenient value above the required plane and the travelers are constructed so that their length is equal to this value. As excavation works proceeds, the traveler is sighted in between the sight rails and used to monitor the cutting and filling. 4. Slope Rails or Batter Boards For controlling side slopes on embankments and cuttings slope rails are used. For an embankment the slope rails usually define a plane parallel to the slope of the embankment offset by a convenient distance, setting out for excavation of building foundation. Before the excavation for the proposed foundation is commenced, the site shall be cleared of vegetation, brushwood, stumps of trees, debris, etc. Next is to set out a baseline for the work. For setting out the foundations of small buildings, the center line of the longest outer wall of the building is first marked on the ground by stretching a string between wooden or mild steel pegs driven at the ends. For accurate work, nails can be fixed at the center of the pegs. Two pegs, one on either side of the central peg, are driven at each end of the line. Each peg is equidistant from the central peg and the distance between the outer pegs corresponds to the width of foundation trench to be excavated. Each peg may project about 25 to 50 mm above the ground level and may be driven at a distance of about 2 m from the edge of excavation so that they are not disturbed. When string is stretched joining the corresponding pegs at the two extremities of the line, the boundary of the trench to be excavated can be marked on the ground with dry lime powder. The center lines of other walls, which are perpendicular to the long wall, are then marked by setting out right angles. A right angle can be set out by forming a triangle with 3, 4 and 5 units long. These dimensions should be measured with the help of a steel tape. Alternatively, a theodolite or prismatic compass may be used for setting out right angles. Similarly, Outer lines of the foundation trench of each cross wall can be set out, as shown in the following figure below. Let's do example, example 2.1. The six corners of a proposed L-shaped excavation shown in figure 2.1, A, below have been set out on site. Offset pegs have been established to help define the sides of the excavation. The proposed formation level of the surface of the excavation at point R is 95.72 meter. The surface is to fall at 1 in 150 from R to W and is to rise at a slope of 1 in 100 at right angle to the line RW. The cross sections for lines P1 RW P2 and P4 up 3 are as depicted in figure 2.1. B, and figure 2.1, C, respectively. To help with excavation site, site rails are to be erected above the offset pegs for use with a 2-meter traveler. Given the reduced levels of the offset pegs, calculate the heights of the site rails to be used at P1, P2, P3 and P4. Solution Example 2.1 Solution for line P1 RWP2 Formation level at P1 is proposed formation level at R plus with length point P1 to point R per 150. So, 95.72 plus with 3 per 150, and the answer is 95.74 meter. Formation level at P2 is proposed formation level at R minus with length point P2 to point R per 150. So, 95.72 minus with 48 per 150 and the answer is 95.40 meter. 
underscore offset peg P1. Required top of site trail level is formation level at P1 plus height of traveler. So, 95.74 plus 2.00 and the answer is 97.74 meter. Actual of peg level is 96.95 meter. Therefore, distance above P1 is formation level at P1 minus with actual of peg level. So, 97.74 minus with 96.95 and the answer is 0.79 meter. For offset peg P2. Required top of site trail level is formation level at P2 plus height of traveler. So, 95.40 plus 2.00 and the answer is 97.40 meter. Actual of peg level is 96.45 meter. Therefore, distance above P2 is formation level at P2 minus actual of peg level. So, 97.40 minus 96.45 and the answer is 0.95 meter. Solution for line P4 UTP3. Formation level at Z is proposed formation level at R minus with length point Z to point R per 150. So, 95.72 minus with 15 per 150, and the answer is 95.62 meter. Formation level at P3 is formation level at Z plus with length point P3 to point Z per 100. So, 95.62 plus with 28 per 100 and the answer is 95.90 meter. Formation level at P4 is formation level at Z minus with length point P4 to point Z per 100. So, 95.62 minus with 3 per 100 and the answer is 95.59 meter. For offset peg P3. Required top of site trail level is formation level at P3 plus with height of traveler. So, 95.90 plus 2.00 is 97.90 meter. Actual of peg level is 97.12 meter. Therefore, distance above P3 is formation level at P3 minus actual of peg level. So, 97.90 minus 97.12 is 0.78 meter. For offset peg P4. Required top of site trail level is formation level at P4 plus height of traveler. So, 59 plus 2.00 is 97.59 meter. Actual of peg level is 96.75 meter. Therefore, distance above P4 is formation level at P4 minus actual of peg level. So, 97.59 minus 96.75 is 0.84 meter. Thank you all of you for your attention. See you the next class. Bye and take care.